Just nudge the person to your left or to your right. They can forward that on to you just so it's a little bit easier to just follow along. But um, if you don't know, we as a church just started about a month ago. And we just had this past Sunday our inaugural service. You so what that means is it was like our first official Sunday where we brought as many people as we could. And this past Sunday of a members of just 12, we had 54 people come out. Which is very, very exciting. So I'm using this actually opportunity not only to not address an issue, but actually use it as an opportunity to teach us something. Yes. So the title I have for tonight is The Need for Urgency. See, when you think about things, mm. you know, where do you think most problems in the ministry or church or maybe even in your life come from? Mm. You know, we have the scriptures. We have an increasing know-how of what to do in our lives. We have people around us to the, that are helping us to point us in the right direction. But yet we can kind of still fall short sometimes. I believe most problems and failures that spring up in the ministry or in our lives are that we think we have time. Mm. That most of our problems that we have in our life is not simply from a lack of wisdom, but from a lack of timing. Mm. You know, we are often told that life is short, but we're guilty of wasting the time that we have been given. There is not a more unappreciative gift than today. The gift that you've been given today, the life you've given today, people unappreciate the time that they're given. So developing a sense of urgency isn't just a call for the moment, but is a call for our own characters. Come on. And if we do that, we'll prevent many mistakes and failures in our life. And also you'll start to have your own personal ministry come back to you. Mm -hmm. So again, the title of my lesson is simply a teaching lesson for tonight, is the need for urgency. So, point number one is what does it mean to be urgent? So, the definition of urgent means compelling or requiring immediate action or attention. Insist or earnest in salutation. So, urgency is a combination of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. The thoughts that spark, of, uh, that sparks after realizing great opportunities and potential hazards that can happen in your life. The feelings are a gut-level determination that pushes you to do something now yeah. and with no option of backing down. And finally, behaviors is like an alertness approaching each waking moment with a focus on important actions that build up to success or addressing an issue in your life. So urgency does not only come for people that are leaders. You know, just as because I'm leading the church doesn't mean I'm the only one that has to be urgent. Yeah. Everyone has to have this sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. And all it really takes is, and it requires, is someone that has a dream, a focus. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, this scripture here in Godly Sorrow. So in 2 Corinthians 7, 10 through 11, it describes someone who's urgent about their sins here. It reads, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow produced, has produced in you? What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourself, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. It talks about here when someone starts to have godly sorrow, meaning realizing that their sin has started to hurt God, then it produces a urgency to repent. Right? It's not just someone who, after being told that they have sin and they need a change, it's someone who already realized it in themselves and doing required actions in their own uh, lives because they know that their sin is hurting God. But urgency is a commitment to making something happen undetermined or undeterred by the rubbish that gets in your way trying to stop you. It is a sense that you give off to people around you that there is something that must be done and it must be done now. So there is no stopping a truly urgent person. There is no limit to where they are willing to go for success. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't really want to do it, you'll find an excuse. And you notice that, right? When you see someone who really just urgently wants to, to change their life. I know I have uh, of those who came from Sydney there's a great story of our friend and our brother named Doom. So this guy, he was studying the Bible, and at this moment, like, 
He was studying. He came from an atheist background. Never really knew God. Never read the Bible. But he started to get to a conviction about God, uh, Jesus is Lord. And so the day before his decision to become a Christian, or actually the morning of, yeah. we find out that he was in a relationship, in a, in a dating a non-Christian. And the relationship wasn't very godly. And we found out that morning, like an hour before he was deciding to become a Christian. And so we're like, oh my gosh, we totally forgot about that. We totally spaced on this. <laughs> so we just like, hey man, um, we, we know you want to become a Christian and everything, but we've got to make sure we do this right. You don't want to mess up this, right? It's like you don't want to go on your wedding day and you may mess it up on, on your convictions. In the same way, this is, this is an important decision in your life. We've got to do this right. Yeah. And he's like, okay, what do I have to do? We're like, well, I don't know, man. Well, I mean, you're going to have to break it up, but if you need time, that's okay. He's like, okay. Literally two minutes later, he calls her up and says, we have to break up. I'm becoming a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 we were blown away by it. But you yeah. saw that there was this urgency where nothing else was going to stop him. Even we lacked a little bit of faith in what was going to happen there. And that's what it means to have that urgency with your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But sin is not the only thing that we should be urgent about. Urgency is a state of being. Not limited to a feeling of inspiration. So there's something in Psalms here, in Psalms 90, verse 12, it says here, this trying to acquire this wisdom, teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You see throughout the Bible that everything in the Bible was actually about timing and how urgent people were and how, how, how eager they were to get to the task that they were called to. We, we read about throughout the scriptures, you'll always come across this statement of early in the morning. Early in the morning, Abraham went to the mountain to sacrifice his son Isaac. You have that in Genesis chapter 22. Early in the morning, Joshua and the Israelites went to the promised land. Joshua 3.1. Early in the morning, Jesus went to spend time with God in prayer. We see throughout the Bible that people did that early in the morning. They were urgent about the things that God has called them to do. See, each day is numbered. And not only so, but each blooming moment is actually a countdown. You know, there's no bigger false doctrine in the world than believing in the future. There's a story about this young man going to the doctors. And, you know, it was just for a regular checkup. And he went in there, just regular checkup, and the doctor came out and just said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you, you actually don't have much time to live. This guy was about 20, and he starts freaking out. He's like, are you serious? This was just a regular checkup. What, what should I do? I have to go talk to my family and everything. And then the, the doctor continued, if you're lucky enough, you'll live for another 80 years. <laughs> but you'll soon find out that that's not a long time. Wow. And it's not promised either. What are you going to do with it? And so at first, it's just, wow, timing is important. Mm -hmm. And then the same reason, within the scriptures, timing is important as well. Come on, when time. we read a command, when we read about repentance, when we read about these things, wow. our urgency is a matter of salvation. Wow. And that goes into my point number two. Urgency is a matter of salvation. If you guys want to, you can turn, if you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 4. Come on, Sean. See, Come on, bro. if you are not... You know, first convinced that urgency is a necessary characteristic for those who are being a Christian. You need to understand that it's a salvation issue. And hopefully that will wake you up. So first, the kind of sub point is, it's a matter of your salvation. So you read here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. See, here when Jesus preached about the kingdom coming, it was saying that it was near. You need to hurry up and repent. Mm. Salvation has always been on a timeline. Mm. See, throughout the Old Testament, there were predictions and prophecies of the coming of the kingdom and of Christ. So when the Messiah came, when Jesus Christ came, when it was his time to be at hand, there was no time to think or consider he was like, you guys need to decide now. You had all that time to decide. Now it is time to repent, mm -hmm. for the kingdom has come near. Mm -hmm. and we actually see that when he calls his disciples, right? He calls his disciples in Mark chapter 1. And when he calls them, he, he expected urgency in their, in, in their response to his call. In the same way, 
you know, it, it affects our salvation as well when God is calling us. See, Isaiah long ago warned that we can start to miss our opportunities if we're not urgent enough. In Isaiah 55, verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. See, don't be fooled. God cannot be mocked. He is known to have an unparalleled um, patience, but there are many in hell remembering the missed opportunities that God has given them to reach out for him. There's this true story of a person that we're studying the Bible with back in Los Angeles, back in America. And I knew of the person that was studying the Bible, but I wasn't actually in the studies. But um, I believe his name was... I think it was Kyle or Aaron, one of those two. But um, we were studying the Bible with him, and this person actually came from a drug uh, addiction background. And he got to the point, we studied with him for a couple of months, and he was changing his life. He started to get clean from drugs, move out of his old house, and all these different things. But the day before his baptism, um, he decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to sin one more time, just to kind of get it out of my system and be done with it, and then I'm, I'm, then I'm starting my new life. But he didn't realize, if you haven't done a substance for a long time, mm -hmm. your, your tolerance starts to go low, right? And so what he used to do before, his body couldn't handle it anymore. Mm -hmm. And literally the day before his baptism, he OD'd and died. Wow. And we, we were all shocked that morning. I think we were all just kind of like, what are we supposed to do? Mm -hmm. it, it was something that was crazy. Is like, yeah, he, he had that opportunity, but he missed it. It was so close from having it. Mm. This is what it's teaching us. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. It's, it's a timing issue. Mm. You may not always have that, that moment. Call on when he is near. It continues on in just the, the study I sent out. Romans 2 verse 4. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness? Talking about God. Forbearance and patience. Not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Wow. Now, I know that there's a powerful saying that says each moment that you're not burning in hell is a moment undeserved. Yeah. Wow. Once we realize that, and each opportunity that we are given to, to, to that, that God is giving us that patience to actually lead us to repentance, wow, it really changes our mind about the decisions we need to make today. Right. Again, I wonder how many have missed salvation just because they weren't urgent enough. Wow. You'll turn to Matthew chapter 24. Come on, child. Verse 36 through 39. Continuing on this idea of urgency in our own relationship with God, it says, But about the day or hour, no one knows. Talking about the day that God and uh, Jesus is going to return. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For it was in the days of Noah, so it will be, at the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days, talking about the days of Noah, before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving to marriage, given into marriage, up to the day of Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. It's talking about here that people don't really know when the day is going to come. See, we are always coming one day closer to either our death or to the return of Jesus. What will you do? What will you be doing, excuse me, when salvation comes to you? Have you been wasting your time or do you realize that man, we need to make some urgent decisions for our own salvation? Because repent before it's too late. Um, sorry, you know, repent before it's too late. Bow your knee in praise before you have to bow your knee in submission. Mm -hmm. So he says here in Romans 14, 11, For it is written, As surely as I live, the, uh, says the Lord, every kneel, knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. So people that are bowing their knee now saying Jesus is Lord, he's saying that one day they will. Mm -hmm. When they die and come before us, they for sure will bow their knee. And so it's us making that decision urgently of, and we need to make sure we bow our knee now rather than later. Mm -hmm. So just a simple question we have to ask ourselves. Is there any, is there something that we haven't yet repented of? Or that we've been putting off or that we've been holding off? 
Is there something that you haven't really made Jesus Lord over your life yet? It's not just a challenge to repent. We all know we're imperfect. But it's to urgently, I need to get this out of my life instead of sweeping it under the rug. Mm -hmm. So that's for us, right? That's a matter of our salvation. This kind of sub-point is matter of other people's salvation. We we'll read here in Matthew 13, verse 19. It says, When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. So this is what's commonly known as the parable of the sowers, right? Talking about all the different seeds that you can sow on different soils, and the soils are representing our hearts. And so what it's saying here is that when the word of God is getting sown in someone's heart, it's saying, what is Satan trying to do, the evil one? He's trying as quickly as possible to rip it out, mm. as fast as he can. Satan does not take a break. Right when the seeds of the word are penetrating someone's heart, mm -hmm. Satan is clasping at the opportunity of stealing it away. Mm -hmm. And we see this. That's what he did with Jesus, right? In Luke 4.13, this is after he tempted him. It says, when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Meaning it wasn't the end game for him yet. He says, you know, I'll be back soon. I'm just mm -hmm. waiting for the opportune time to steal it away. See, just like with Jesus, Satan is waiting for an opportune time to take away our faith or from the people that are surrounding us. See, we at times can lose people simply because Satan is willing to work harder and faster than you. Mm. That there are people in our lives that we can actually reach out to, but Satan is working harder and faster than us. Wow. And the main question we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to outwork Satan? Mm. That when the... When the word is sown in someone's heart. Are we there right away making sure that it's starting to grow? Or do we think, oh, it'll be okay. Right? We had a lot of people come out this last Sunday. That's awesome and all glory to God. But have we been not urgent with some people that came out? Mm -hmm. Are we taking a little bit too time? Between here and last and Sunday, I know it's only been three days, but that sounds like an opportune time for, for Satan. Yeah. And so that's what we have to have in our minds. It's not just about... Um, you know, building that relationship and all these things. Yes, but it's protecting people from Satan. Yeah. That right when, you know, we know and we understand the most powerful thing is the word of God. And so does Satan know that. So he's trying to strip it away from people. So my encouragement, if there's anybody that has came this Sunday that you've started to build a friendship with, have you yet reached out to them? And not only this past Sunday, but again, it's, 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 it's a lifestyle, right? Yeah. Is there anybody in your life now that you know that needs the word of God? You know that you need to reach out to them but you haven't really been urgent about that relationship. I would encourage you, phone them up. Talk to them this week. Get with them. Talk to them about God. Start urgently getting in there before Satan gets in there before you. Mm -hmm. Point number three is the consequences of not being urgent. Mm -hmm. So if you are going in your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 13. Oh my God. Sure. But I think with all these things and talking about urgency, right? So tonight is just like, again, a more of a teaching series. Um, we can make the mistake of thinking that having a sense of urgency is natural. But it's actually, nothing is further from the truth. Right. A sense of stability comes more natural to many, though, um, to many of us rather than a sense of urgency. We, we like to actually think everything's going to be okay rather than, oh, we got problems, we got to hurry up. Mm -hmm. right? And so it's quite opposite of how we naturally are. We're naturally, is everything's going to be okay rather than naturally going after things. See, for most people, urgency comes at like kind of like a summer rain, if you will, where when there's things that important tasks come up, then you start to get urgent. But it's not really our character. See, we need to develop urgency as though it's like a, a coursing river. It's always there. You put something in front of you, front of you, you're gonna do it as though you're doing it for God. And then all these scriptures starts to pop up, right? You do it as though you're doing it from God. God's your master. You do it as you're grateful for it. You do it as though you don't, you don't know if you're going to have tomorrow, all right? Mm -hmm. So all these scriptures actually start to make sense about having urgency. So you don't only be urgent on the important things, but have a sense of urgency for everything. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that is not my character. Uh, and my wife will be the first one to tell you. <laughs> I am very much have a character of, we'll see what happens. 
you know, uh, I, I can do it tomorrow. Don't worry, we'll do it later, right? No, don't worry about it. Um, and so this is something that I actually have to learn as well, is not only do I have to do it for understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because your salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is uh, nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Mm. Again, going back to that understanding that each moment is a countdown. We don't know if we're going to have the next day. And to be honest, if you really want to, if you, if you don't really connect to that thought, just watch the news one day. Yes. <laughs> Read some articles. You'll read every day. There's a car crash here, fatality. Casualty over here, over here, over here. Wow. It's like each moment that I get to walk across the street, God bless me. Wow. It, it's almost like that nowadays. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. Is like, hey, it, it's closer than it is now. You have less time to repent than you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's pretty crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. And so we have to develop our life on not just this life of, oh, I'll do it later. But this life of let me realize the miracles and the blessing God is giving me now. Let me do the most that I can with them. See, once you start to live this life, if you're not urgent about things, and you live this casual life, you'll, your life will just be either a, a mundane life, a boring life, or you'll end up as a casualty. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to be urgent about things. See, one thing that causes us to be a sloth in the things that, we're, that we're, we should be urgent about throughout life is that we're slowed down by yesterday's problems. Because we weren't urgent yesterday, we're still dealing with those things today. But if you do that long enough, you start to get burnt out, bothered by the next problem that happens in your life, or you start to feel burdened. Mm -hmm. And so the longer you put off urgency, the harder it is going to actually start to develop it. Because you don't do it again today, tomorrow you're just going to feel more and more burdened than the things you should have done yesterday. And so this actually, again, comes back into what Jesus has always taught. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah. But guess what? If you're not solving all the problems today, they're going to go into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And now you're not only just worrying about today, you're worrying about last week because you are not urgent. And so this thing is actually a benefit for yourself. Nobody wants to live a life that is burnt out, burdened, or, uh, or bothered by different things. So people start to, you can tell if that's in your heart, when you start to feel like things of, man, um, being a Christian is too hard, and the ministry is too hard, or why do we have to share so many times, or why do we have to keep going? Mm. Those things come from that you're being burdened by things that you are not actually addressing in your own life. Yeah. Mm. Come on. See, it says here, and it's kind of a warning and also a teaching, in Proverbs 18.9, it says here, one who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Wow. That's referring to Satan there. It's saying one who actually is slack in their work is like an accomplice to Satan. Wow. What that means is when you are doing nothing, you are actually doing the work of Satan. Yeah. That's what he would love for you to do. Right? The work of God is to do righteous things. Satan, his work is not to go murder people or to go lie. Like, th those are things that are just of sin. But his work is if, if he gets you to do nothing. It's like, man, that is awesome. I don't care if you're out sinning or anything. Just, just do nothing. That would be great. I don't know if you guys ever read the, um, a, a famous book. It's called The Screw Tape Letters. Yes. I haven't read it all the way through, but it's an amazing, amazing book. What it is, is kind of like this, it's, it's not a real story, but it's a really cool story. Um, it, it's, it's about a, a senior demon, so like a, a demon who's been around for a while, and a younger demon. And they're writing letters in between each other. And the story goes somewhere along the lines that the younger demon starts to write to the older demon saying, Hey, I got this guy who's, who's uh, you know, he's smoking, he's doing drugs, his relationships are horrible, I got him. It's awesome. And the older demon writes back to him, What are you doing? That's the worst thing you can do for somebody. If they start to do these things, they're going to start seeking God. What you need to do is you need to make them comfortable. Yeah. See, I have this guy. He goes to church maybe once a month. He thinks he's doing okay. He has okay relationships, but he's not really seeking God. He's not going to change. Wow. And so it showed this mindset of like, see, see, doing Satan's work is simply if you just do nothing. 
And so this, this consequences of not being urgent is that actually we start to do Satan's will more than God's will. Ooh. But now let's start to get, get exciting, right? On, uh, let's look at the benefits of being urgent. Come on, Come on girl. Come on. So Mark chapter 1, we'll read 35 through 34. Or excuse me, uh, through 39. We won't read backwards. <laughs> um, it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Solomon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. So when he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. See here, it talks about again that Jesus got up early in the morning out to pray and have his time with God. And after that, he was ready to get, uh, he was prepared to do everything that he needed to do, right? He said, this is why I've come. I am now prepared for it. This is saying, it says that it is, e it is better to be prepared without opportunity than it is to have an opportunity without preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, when we start to focus on, you will, uh, excuse me, you will be able to start focusing on why you have come rather than what you are dealing with. Proverbs 15, verse 23, a person finds joy in giving an opt reply and how good it is for a timely word. I mean, once we start to be urgent, things start to happen good in our life. So listening, I just listed a couple different benefits that you can have when you start to be urgent in your life. One is you develop a creative, uh, you start to develop creative ideas to progress towards success. Meaning, if you realize that you have to make a solution now, you're going to get creative. Yeah. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing, but if I'm going to figure it out, I better find out a way. Yeah. So you're, start, you're going to start to give opportunities to God as well. You're going to increase your faith as your actions start to increase because you start to do more things. Uh, you're going to have lower stress and frustration as things no longer pile up in your life. Yeah. You're going to avoid being fearful of problems as each new issue is now faced with determination. You're not scared of problems anymore. You're like, let them come on in because I'm going to be urgent to attack them in my life. Come on. You're, going to be a, you're going to be a reliable leader and you're going to be reliable to your leadership and to your followers starting to build deep relationships because something can happen and they know that you will urgently be there for them. Yeah. So we're just going to list off some practicals that you can do to start to build urgency in your own life. So here's some fundamental practicals. So like I said, there's urgent thoughts. Urgent feelings and urgent be, uh, behaviors. So you're talking about urgent thoughts. I think one thing that you can do is you can write a to-do list every morning. And write them out first in order of importance to you. And try to complete one of them before 9 a.m. Because then you start off the day of, I'm going to start knocking this out. You know, have a list. The second thing you could do is have a list of goals you want to see accomplished by the end of the week, month, or year. Starting to actually have a focus in your life rather than just kind of living day to day. Urgent feelings. One thing you can do is pray for each one of your goals. Mm. Not just writing it down, but getting God involved and saying, hey, God, I'm really going to do these things. Second thing is you can remember scriptures of how God is urgent in your life and how he wants you to be that as well. You know, how, how, how discouraging would it be if there are scriptures that say, when you pray, God will think about, think about it. That'd be discouraging, you know? Yeah. If it said, hey, when you pray, God will find time for you. I know, that's not what the scriptures say, right? It says, when you pray, it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Like a good father, God is there, yeah. you know? <laughs> if uh, the Americans know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, if you start to develop that in your life, you'll start to see how God is urgent in your life, and you should be urgent in your life. Well. Yeah, come on. Urgent behaviors. One thing you do is do something each day that gets you closer to your goals that you want to accomplish by the end of the year, week, or month. Mm -hmm. Always return calls, emails, or texts within a 24-hour period. I That's something that, again, <laughs> is, just, is just helpful for relationships. You know, have you ever tried hitting somebody up and they just don't get back to you? It doesn't, it doesn't feel very good. And so once you start doing that in urgent in your relationship, you'll start to see it building as well. Come on, bro. Um, do any advice that is given to you within that hour. Wow. So if someone gives you advice, do it within the hour. Because sometimes we think so much about it and everything and then we end up not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think if we start to do these things, 
again, what's awesome is we start to have that win-win situation. Yeah. We get away from the consequences of feeling burdened or, you know, tired or all these things that are building up in our lives and we start to go uh, with the benefits starting to see God in our lives starting to see the miracles and each opportunity is a waking moment for something great to happen and to God be all the glory thank you